How we doing, ladies and gentlemen? Root of the Null here, coming back at you with some more Python code, and today we're going to be checking out the subprocess module. Now, I've got the documentation up right here, and you can see that it says pretty explicitly this module is new in version 2.4. So if you're running a version of Python that's older than that, um, you're a little outdated, and you might want to wipe the dust off your shoulders, because you can upgrade and go ahead and use this cool module, or you might just kind of have to suck it up and not watch the series and not really use the full potential of Python. Python as it is now. But anyway, <laughs> I don't really want to insult you if you're running some old software, but anyway, let's move on here because the subprocess module is really cool. Now, what it does is it allows you to spawn new processes, it allows you to connect their input, output, and error pipes, and obtain the return codes. Now, the module was originally intended to replace several other older modules and functions like the OS system, the OS spawn, OS process open, process open 2, and then things from the commands module. So, what we, sh what we should kind of get from that, what we should understand, is that this is the way it should be done in Python. We should be able to run commands as if we were using our shell, like cmd.exe if we're on Windows, or bash, like if we're typing in our console, or our X terminal or whatever if we're in Linux, and we can get the information from them, and this is the way that we should do it. We shouldn't use os.system, or s.popin, or that sort of thing. Now, I'm going to say popin a lot, <laughs> I may be saying it accidentally when I mean to say um, process open, but in all honesty, it doesn't matter as long as you guys both understand and know that we're all kind of talking about the same thing here. But let's go ahead and move on. When we're using the subprocess module, we have to keep in mind that the recommended approach to invoking subprocess subprocesses is to use the following convenience functions for all the cases that they can handle. For more advanced uses, there is the underlying popin or process open interface and constructor that allows you to really manipulate the standard input, standard output, and other pipes. But anyway, the first function that I want to take a look at in this series is call. Now, let's let's kind of just go ahead and jump into our, our interpreter and see what we can do here. Now, we could go ahead and import subprocess. But keep in mind, if we import the module this way, that means we have to type in all of our commands or all the functions that we're going to be using by typing in the module name and then go ahead and checking out um, uh, with our functions with a dot selector. Now, I'm a little bit lazy because I'm a programmer, you know. <laughs> so the way that I'm going to import everything is from subprocess import everything. And uh, that will just give us all the function without having to have to use that dot selector in the module name. So if I were to type in call, and I know the first argument that we can pass in is the command that we run that we want to run, I can just type in uh, ls, and that gives me zero. <laughs> okay, um, what what is that? <laughs> Let's check out the documentation once more. What this will do is it will run the command described by args, or the first variable that we pass in, wait for the command to complete, and then return the return code attribute. Now, when you're in the shell, when you're in batch, if you're on Windows, or if you're in bash, or C shell, or Z shell, or SH, or whatever the heck the case may be if you're on Linux, I don't know. What you do whenever you type in a command, whenever you run a program within the terminal, that program will take in your standard input, and it will display standard output, and it will display standard error, and that sort of thing. It also, at the very end, returns a return code or a return value. Now, that return value is only a little bit of information. It will determine whether or not the command ran successfully, or whether or not there was a problem. Now, if the return code is zero, that means that the command ran successfully. So you can see that our ls function, or our ls command, or our ls call, whatever you want to call it, ran successfully because it returned zero. But if it were to turn anything other than zero, like maybe one, that means that something went wrong and it had to explicitly tell us that something did not happen the way that it was supposed to happen. Maybe the process was killed, maybe there was an error inside the source code, or whatever the heck the case may be. But, this is all the information that we can get from it, and this is exactly what the call function is letting us know. Okay, let's kind of expand on this a little bit more, though. Because, we have all of these other extraneous, um, not so much extraneous, but optional parameters and things that we can call in here. Now, this asterisk is what I'm a little curious of. Because, let's say we have call, we're, we're calling our ls command. Now, I want to call our ls command with an argument. Let's say call ls dash L. Hmm. 
Now this will give me an error. Okay. Do you guys understand this? Because I want to make the point and kind of get this across to you that whenever you run a command with the call function or any other function that you're using the, within the subprocess module, what you're going to have to do is pass in your entire command as a list. Now, you guys know lists, right? Because when we were learning the very basics in the beginning of Python, those were like those were data types that were a lot like an array or a matrix or like multiple values inside packed inside one value. So, what we have to do here is call, and you can use our braces to denote a list, and a string be our first argument, first command, and then dash L can be our second one. That's our second argument that we pass in. Now this will run properly, it will run properly, and we have zero as our return value. Awesome, 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 awesome. Let's check out the documentation once more. Standard input, standard output, standard error. All right, those are default set to nothing, so we don't really have to worry about that. Let's take a look at the shell argument. Um, if we take a look at it down here in the examples, we can see that, all right, we already ran the call ls-l, and we got zero. Now, um, they're calling subprocess call exit one, and they're passing in shell and setting that to true. All right, let's, uh, let's play around with that one. Let's see if we can make a mess out of that. <laughs> let's call exit without any, um, exit zero. How about that? Exit zero without telling it the shell is going to be true. If we run this, we get an error. Now this is because exit isn't specifically a command, but it's built in to the shell. So we have to let it, the subprocess or whatever we're calling, we have to let it know that, yeah, we want shell to equal true. Now, when we call exit, whatever we pass in as our second argument or Actually, it's part of the command in this case, so we really don't need to use a, a list. That's going to return whatever we set up here as the return value. So if I set shell to equal true, you can see we get zero. And if we were to run this one more time and set up, like, let's say, um, two, exit two, shell equals true, we're going to get two as our return value. All right, so that works very well. But it looks like the documentation has a big warning here. Let's take a look at that. Invoking the system shell with shell equals true can be a security hazard if combined with untrusted input. See the warning under frequently used arguments for details. Huh. Okay, so it's dangerous if maybe we don't know what exactly we're calling. If we set up a program that, let's say, would take the input of the user and run that as a command, we don't know if they're just going to say, yeah, let's display everything, and after that, let's go ahead and destroy the entire file system. How about that? That's dangerous, you know? <laughs> that, that, that's a really big problem. So when we're passing within shell equals true, we kind of have to be really cautious about that. But if we don't use shell equals true and we try and run a command that has this um, uh, a colon in it that we were saying do another command after we've ran that, it's not going to work. So let's try and set this up. If let's say, let's say, hmm, I want to run ls and that's going to be a command with multiple arguments. Oh, so that has to be inside of a list. And let's say after that, let's use a semicolon here and tell it to exit with the status of 1. Now, something went wrong here. Okay. Let's take a look at this again. That still isn't going to work for us, see? Now this will work perfectly fine, but... Anything else with that? like a colon after it, it's still going to give us a problem. So we really have to be kind of knowledgeable and understanding what it is that we're trying to do here. But experimenting with it is going to give us some different results all the time. <laughs> all right, let's see if we can move on here. Let's actually set up this way. We can have it display and set up our standard output to equal a file, you know? Let's have it output to a, a, a file. Can, it, can we do that? <laughs> let's set up... Um, let's say file object and let's go ahead and set that equal to open so it's going to be a handle and we can just call it thing.text and we're going to want to write to that alright so now our file object has been created and we can go ahead and call a function let's say call um, ls I'll use it inside of a list just to have good practice and let's supply standard output and that's going to equal file object 
because we want the handle or the object of the file that we're writing to. Now if we run this, we get zero, it ran successfully, and now file object should be full of whatever we have here. So let's try and run file object dot read. Is it going to let us do that? No. Alright, it's not open for reading. Let's say, let's close the object. Now, let's open it up again, but this time let's open it for reading. And now if I open up file object dot read, here's everything that I have inside my directory, because we were able to supply that inside of our subprocess call function. Oh, I've already, I've already read it. My bad. <laughs> so I can't actually print that another time. But, what we, you can see that it's there, it's just with the um, escape sequences, forward slash n, backslash n, sorry. But anyway, the idea that I'm trying to get across to you is that we can supply our file object to be part of the standard output. As in, it's going to print or display everything into the object, into the file, rather than nothing. Because by default, in the documentation, it's telling us that that's nothing. Now, we can actually supply the standard error to be this exact same thing. We can actually set it up with, um, I think, standard output... To also capture standard error in the result, use standard error equals subprocess.standardout, and that's going to kind of return whatever you've already set up for our um, standard output, which in our case would have been the file object. So if you wanted this to include any errors that may have occurred, we can just supply that in the same syntax. So call, it would be ls standard output can equal the file object or whatever we're using in that case, and then standard error can equal standard output. Now we don't have to use, remember, the subprocess dot selector because we have everything selected all the time already. Okay. <laughs> I think I think <laughs> I, I, I'm pretty certain that's everything that I wanted to cover in this video. Um, I'm thinking it was pretty lengthy. I'm really not sure about time right now, but I think we covered a lot. It's a good introduction to the subprocess module, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. We're going to be taking a look at some more of the really cool functions and things that are kind of discussed in the documentation in later videos, and we should have um, a lot of cool stuff underway. <laughs> Thank you for watching, guys, and I'll talk to you in the next video. Bye.